All right, so if you're a new agent and you're watching this and you're saying to yourself, okay, how in the world, Brandon, can I compete with agents that are so much more experienced than me? I got you. I'm going to show you in this video how you can crush top agents. It doesn't matter how new you are, how much experience they have, you can dominate at a listing appointment and win virtually every single time, regardless of what agent you go up with or, or go up against, I should say. Why do I say that? How do I know? Because people don't remember what you say. They only remember how you made them feel. Let me prove it. Look at the last movie that you watched. Maybe you saw Top Gun 2. I was a huge fan, loved it. Couldn't recite maybe, uh, probably yeah, the first one I know every word. The second one, I don't know any of the scripts. I can't remember any of the words. However, I can tell you I freaking love the movie. Why? Because of how it made me feel. We've never walked out of a movie, you and I, and said, wow, those words were amazing. Never happened, not once. What do we say? That movie was incredible because of how it made us feel. We're gonna take that same principle today and we're gonna apply it to a listing appointment on how you can crush experienced agents as a new agent, all right? So I've got 10 things for you to take away from this video. So if you've got something to write with, grab a clean sheet of paper and let's get to work. So when we get into a listing opportunity and you find yourself interviewing to take a listing, I want you to remember this video and say, okay, it's all about how I make this person feel so that they believe I am the right agent for the job because when I leave here tonight, they're not gonna remember anything that we talked about, only the way I made them feel. All right, so number one, before the appointment, okay? Listen, I already hear the haters in the comments. I'm gonna put them aside. I'm just giving you ideas, all right? So for the analytical freaks out there, I love you guys. Um, uh, take this for what it is, okay? So, so these are all great ideas, all things that we've done that work really well. Number one, before the appointment, when you send your pre-listing packet, all right, that has your resume, has your marketing strategy, uh, what I want you to include is what I call a memory box. Here's the thing. If you've never sold a home before, or you've never helped anybody sell a home before, people are attached to the, their homes for the most part. And you can maybe make peace with that. So what we can do, and people all the time, when you start listing a lot of homes as a new agent, people are gonna ask you, hey, can, can I get a copy of the, the photos that you did? We wanna, you know, we love that house, we'd like to keep those for our files. Well, what if we did that ahead of time? What if before the listing appointment, you gave them a memory box and you grabbed photos of the property and you had a whole photo book, you can do this on all the, the, the canvas and all of those types of sites, put together a really cool photo book uh, for their memory box. You put together some coffee mugs, you can use a company called Mailbox Power, that's what we use. Uh, and you can create this really cool memory box that gets delivered to the seller with your pre-listing packet ahead of the listing appointment. And in the letter, you say, hey, listen, um, I just wanted you guys have something for something to remember this home after we sell this home together. Very assumptive, very confident. We're assuming that they're going to hire us. So that's number one. Number two, a competition preview. So what does this mean? So after we get to the property and we walk through the home, we say, come on guys, we're gonna jump in my car. I've set up some appointments to walk you guys through the homes we're gonna be competing with when we enter the marketplace. So you throw them in your car, you have agent preview appointments set up and all the active listings that you have as a part of your CMA. So now we're walking the seller through the physical homes, they can touch, they can feel, they can smell the competition. You talk about bringing a CMA presentation to life, there's nothing better than walking uh, a seller through a comp their, their competition, other active listings up for sale in the neighborhood to give sellers really good context of what they're up against. Ooh, and you're gonna love this one. Number three, when you get back from the preview, uh, uh, the, the, the competition previews, I want you to have dinner waiting for them. So we're gonna 
grab a restaurant and we're going to have it catered. And they're going to show up and they're going to have dinner ready for the sellers when you get back from previewing the competitors. It's all about how we make people feel, right? And so, hey, guys, when I leave here, I, I, I know you guys, we, we all love this restaurant here in town. I had them come here, bring dinner. So as soon as we're done here, uh, you guys can enjoy a dinner on me. Law of reciprocity kicking in, right? So that's number three. Number four, our pre-market strategy. All right, so what does this mean? So we're going to explain to the seller we have that we have a pre-marketing strategy that by hiring us or by hiring you, that means you're going to go out there before you hit the market, unlike all the other agents that are super reactive, right? They sit back, throw that thing in the MLS, throw the sign out in the front yard, sit back, pray, wait for a buyer. Not you. By hiring you, you've got a pre-marketing strategy. You're going to go out into the marketplace and have conversations with agents and buyers before the house hits the market to create a buzz, so that when we hit the market, we can have multiple buyers bidding on the property. How do we do that? Tactically speaking for all the analyticals, run a reverse prospecting list in the MLS. And then you'll have a nice list of all the buyers that, home, that have homes saved, just like the home that you're gonna have listed. All right, that's an example. Number five, our 24 seven virtual open house. Imagine a world you can sit in front of a seller and say, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, uh, seller, no longer do we have to schedule a physical open house having every Tom, Dick, and Harry walk through the property, kicking you out of the house the entire weekend. I'm going to have a open house running virtually 24 seven. And how do we do that? I've made many, many videos about the virtual open house, but once we've done the virtual open house, we can put that out there on YouTube. We can put that out there on uh, uh, on social media and run Facebook ads, Google pay per click ads to our virtual open house 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The entire time we have the house listed, driving traffic and leads and interest in our seller's home without having to kick them out. People can walk through the property virtually without ever having to do an actual open house. And it's all about perception. Don't get caught up in the details. It's our ability to communicate the fact that by hiring you, you will have a 24 seven virtual open house. All right, number six, our grand opening event. We don't just list the home, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, and sit back and hope things are gonna go great. No, we have a grand opening event. And so what does that mean? It's a two day event that when we hit the marketplace, we're going to uh, have a strategy where we get all the neighbors first in a private event on a Friday night, why? Because like you, neighbors want people they know to have an opportunity to be their neighbors. I just, uh, when I sold my sister-in-law's home and she moved into my neighborhood, then I listed another one, my sister-in-law knew the buyer. So it's very, very likely that people in the neighborhood have people that they're friends with that wanna move in the neighborhood. So we do that in the private event. I'll make a whole video on that event by itself. And then Saturday and Sunday, we have an, a, a consumer facing grand opening event. Number seven, performance guarantees, all right? So uh, I mentioned this and, and your minds are like, well, what are those? What are the performance guarantees? Again, I will make a full detailed video on these specific tactical things. I'm giving you something to think about. Imagine as a new agent, you could communicate uh, to a seller in a way that gives them absolute confidence in their decision in hiring you being the right agent. And how we do that is by increasing the certainty that you are the right agent, all right? And then we decrease their risk by offering performance-based guarantees, giving them the ability to fire us if we don't hold our end up, uh, our, our, our end up, right? So, the, this is just an example. I'll make a lot of other content around performance-based guarantees, but it's how we communicate that value, that perception of value that earns us the business. Number eight, in addition to our performance-based uh, guarantees or our performance guarantees, what about performance-based compensation, all right? So I had mentioned this in another video a couple weeks ago. All of you had questions on it. I'll give you a little context. So instead of going in there like every other agent that you might be competing with 
and the, the consumer is saying, oh, it's the same old 6%. What if you had a performance-based compensation structure that based on how you performed, now I can already hear you. Well, what if the seller is an overpriced and you can't guarantee, I get it, I'm giving you ideas. So what if the, the seller listed the home at the right price and your compensation structure was, was based on how much you sold the home for? So as an example, I wrote down here. If you, and in my MLS, I'm looking at the stats right now, my average, my average, when I list and sell a home, is 104% average list to sold price ratio, meaning that on average, when I list a home, I'm getting my sellers almost 5% more than what they wanted, okay? So what if my compensation structure reflected that? And so what if you got a 1% bonus, so from 6%, the seller paid you 7% if you got them 105% or more of what they wanted, right? They would get an extra 4%, they would give you 1%, now you're getting 7% on the listing. Next tier could be 100 to 104%, you could charge 6.5%. 98 to 100% could be 6%. Right? This is just giving you an idea of what your performance-based compensation could look like. Number nine is our buyer pre-qualification process. So your ability to communicate to a seller that we don't just let every Tom, Dick, and Harry into your property, no. We have a process that vets out buyers before they walk through your home so that you know when we have a private showing, Mr. or Mrs. Seller, that we have the most willing, an able buyer in that property, and I have a process to make sure that the right buyers are getting into the property, and when they leave that property, I have a strategy to get them to write us an offer. And then number 10 is my offer upsell strategy. So Mr. and, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, once we have a buyer, and they love the home through everything that we've done so far, we get them to write a contract, but that's not where it ends. We have a strategy where we go back to that buyer or we go back to the buyer's agent and the way we position the conversation to open up a negotiation typically yields in you getting a three to 5% bonus in asking price. And so these are just some of the things, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, that you can expect from me moving forward. Now, out of the role play, back to the video. These are just 10 ideas that you can use as a brand new agent to go up against any agent in your market. Because what is our job to win business? Our job is to communicate clearly that we are different than our competitors. We, our job is to create a, a situation where the perception of value in hiring us is as high as possible. How we do that is by how we make people feel. It isn't so much what we say, but what we do that will determine the prospect's action or inaction. So hopefully that's got your mind going. Certainly if you have questions, let me know in the comments below. We can have a conversation. Uh, if you are open to the idea of having a coach in your life, push you, hold you accountable, teach you the strategies that are working right now to get listings, I'm gonna put a link in the comments. I'll also put one in the description of this video. Feel free to click it. We can jump on a call, talk about all of our coaching options, and then you can decide if maybe working with me at this point makes sense or not. So that's all for today's video. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. I appreciate your time, like always.